Evening, I'm going to open up the workshop session of the Asbury Park City Council. We'll move to city manager's report on the issues raised at prior <coughs> meetings. At the last council meeting, there was a, um, a speaker talking about the water company and how we would be having to issue refunds. We contacted the water company. It was the water company's fault. They messed up on the rate. It had nothing to do with usage, so that information we looked into and was found to be incorrect. It was a rate issue by the water company. Uh, there was also another issue of Section 3 and compliance with the Renaissance project. The city has no money into that project. We have no Section 3 requirements. Um, we spoke to HUD, who was in charge of Section 3, who had no complaints um, issued about the Renaissance project. And subsequently, we sent the video to HUD of the, of the speaker and their, their concerns. So HUD can look into it. We haven't heard back from HUD at this point in time. But there has been no complaints about any Section 3 violations at that project. That's all. Mm -hmm. Special events, Leisha? Good evening, Mayor and Council. There are three applications before you this evening. The first one is seeking permission to use the Transportation Center for the uh, Winter Coat Drive giveaway on uh, January 12th. And the last two are from the Garden State Film Festival, requesting to use the council chambers and the senior center for their uh, film festival. Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to presentations. Uh, we have a presentation by Trip Brooks, Brooks of Regional Development Group, LLC, regarding a proposed development project at 215 First Avenue. Good evening, Mayor and Deputy Mayor, City Council members and Administration members. Uh, good evening and happy holidays. My name is Kevin Kennedy. I'm an attorney in Red Bank and I'm very glad and very honored to be here tonight on behalf of Trip Brooks and Regional, uh, <coughs> Regional Development Group. As you are all aware, uh, this city has established a very detailed process for designating a subsequent developer in the waterfront redevelopment area. And the informal presentation tonight represents just one step, albeit uh, a very important step, in regional development group being officially designated as a subsequent developer. Uh, we have worked uh, very well with and will continue to work well with uh, city and ISAR officials on this project as we are cognizant of the important role that each entity plays in this process. Uh, tonight's presentation uh, deals with the property at 215 First Avenue. Uh, the property currently hosts an abandoned apartment complex and regional representatives are, are looking, ultimately looking uh, for uh, permission to demolish the existing structure and construction of a 24 unit condominium building. Uh, we were asked to come before you tonight uh, and very briefly explain, explain the general details of the project so that you as leaders of the city can be more aware uh, of the project and the uh, subsequent uh, developer designation process can continue to unfold. If there are no objections, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to turn it over to uh, Trip Brooks, with whom I, I believe you are all uh, familiar. Uh, Mr. Brooks, uh, the lead representative of the development team, uh, can explain our proposal in greater detail. Great. Can I do that from here? It's okay? Great. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, thank you uh, for having this meeting tonight, uh, fitting this in uh, during the holidays. Um, uh, my name is Jeff Brooks. I'm a developer. I also live at 1212 4th Avenue. I've been a resident since 1999 and as a developer here also for that time. And uh, this is a property that's been vacant since 2005. So for 14 years, this is sat vacant. And um, we've been involved in it for a little over three and a half years. And obviously, thank you to the city for passing the lot by lot development, which is allowing this to go. To iStar Financial for approving us from their end as a subsequent developer and to the residents of uh, Asbury Park um, for, for coming tonight and also for supporting the, the council and, and the development here in town. So I'm gonna go through very quickly. I have my architect here, I'll take you through. I just wanted to point out the first couple of slides. So most of you probably know this building. If you don't, this is where it's located. Um, it's uh, just behind Florida on uh, First Avenue. It's a large lot, it's uh, over 22,000 square feet, so it's, it's a large lot and it backs up to High Star Financial Oaks, this property back here. And again, it's about 145 by 150 lot. It, has, it currently has a building on it and uh, that building we're um, hopefully gonna demolish here 
very shortly. This is the existing building. If you've driven by it, then you know what it looks like. So that's the building that's going to get knocked down. It originally had 32 apartments in it, um, and uh, we're going to at build 24 in its place. This is going to be gone. And this is an image of what we hope to build there as we go through uh, this introduction tonight and then ultimately to the planning board. It's four stories. The architect, uh, Dan, uh, from Mode Architects here at Asbury Park is going to take you through that. I just wanted to, to uh, I wanted to start this because I stood in the back and, and asked you to please put this through with, the, with really the hope in my mind of being able to stand here and do what we're doing tonight, which is to show you what we'd like to do here. So this is the, the project Dan will take you through. I just want to, can you give me that one product? I'm going to have him go into detail on this. This was, um, this was a, a lot of work to find this, but I think you're going to be proud when this is finally done. We have a lot of woodwork here. We have these uh, sliding screens. You have this large wood panels on the back. You have the slats up on the top. So there's a lot of wood product. And this is the product we're going to use. This is 100% recycle, 100%. And Dan will tell you more about that as he, as he goes through. So I'm going to introduce the architect, uh, Dan from uh, Mode Architects, and we'll take you through. But, uh, thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Dan Condator. I'm a owner of Mode Architects. We're located on uh, Lake Ave in Asbury Park. Um, as Tripp said, I'd like to just kind of walk you through uh, you know, our design intent, where we came from, and, and how we got to where we are today. Uh, this is first perspective, it's just an overall perspective of the building, um, you know, looking uh, east towards the ocean. So as you know, we're in the, in the development zone, we have certain architectural guidelines that we need to go by. They're based off of some of the existing historical buildings within uh, uh, the district of, of the styles, uh, uh, modern styles, uh, uh, arts and crafts, and, and those styles there, the guidelines kind of direct you in a way to use those and recall back to the past to create some symmetry within the developments around the waterfront of the development zone, but to do it in a contemporary way. So what we're proposing on this project is to create a uh, contemporary building that's based off the, the modern style, which was popular in the 1930s and 40s, soon after the Art Deco. So that the primary um, material and style of those buildings was the use of stucco. So what we're proposing is a contemporary building with a, a white uh, stucco finish uh, that is that you also see if you drive around through the area that there, there's many stucco buildings within Asbury uh, development zone. And then to accompany that, we're using these uh, black, uh, very thin, mullion uh, industrial style of glazing and proportions. So those, those are the types of things that kind of bring us into that uh, uh, guidance from the development zone. And another part of that is also the, the expression of the horizontal. So that was a big part of the, the modern style in the 30s and 40s that we're kind of bringing into this contemporary. We have um, the very light and, and airy uh, elevation from the second to the fourth floor, but at the same time along the street frontage we have more of like a base uh, situation with more punched openings. We have landscaping. Uh, as you see, when we go to the site plan, you know, it's very important for us to um, care about the streetscape. So um, on the lower level, you can quickly see that we have a nice buffer between uh, the residential with the use of a, like a three foot uh, knee wall that's going to be matched to building materials. And then we have the, the landscaping and the, uh, the, ter the, the terraces themselves are slightly elevated from the street. Um, one of the things that Chip can make, sure if you want. So one of the important things that you know Trip had started to get into, and I want to talk about, is the, the wood material itself. So one of the important aspects is to have unification uh, on all aspects of the building. Um, so we have uh, these custom sliding screen systems that provide you know some privacy to people when they're out in the deck and they can be moved in front of the bedroom areas and, and the, the balcony areas, and they'll have stopping points along the way. But those need to be a custom material. And then we have other trellises, and when we see images of the back, we have screening that goes around our amenity deck. So for us, as a 
as architects, we felt that it was very important that all these pieces uh, become unified. We didn't want to have, you know, Trex over here and then Hardy over there. It was important that we, we unify the project. So we found a product um, that is becoming newer in the United States as people find out about it. It's called Innerwood. It's originally uh, out of Australia. So it's made from 100% uh, recycled wood scraps. So they go to mills in the area, they, they reclaim all the scraps, they pulverize it, they mix it with a resin, and then they add the color to it, and then it gets extruded into shapes like this. So this can be used for screening. They have like tongue and groove boards, similar to like the Hardy for, for walls. Um, it's antimicrobial, it's resistant to moisture. The color goes through the whole thing, so it's, it's natural uh, and grain looking. So if, I know if you see some other pre-manufactured products, um, the grain, you can start to see it repeat on the wall when you have a big wall surface. That won't do that, each piece is, will be unique. And, um, and then we're able to reinforce it. They put aluminum within the, the tube area and then we can use it to build frames and do other things with it. So this is a really great product. And like I said, it's very resistant. So this works perfect for this climate, for the moisture that we have. And, and at the end of its life cycle, it can also be recycled. It can be brought to a, uh, a place to be renewed again. So it's a great product. Um, I can pass it around if you like. Yeah, it's okay. You can, uh, I'll, I'll do that at the end. I wanted to, um, as we go through this year, both layers should correspond with these, and we'll move yep. through these quickly for you to, sure. to keep them. So this, is. so this is basically a shot of the amenity deck. So on the back side, above our parking area, as we get through the plans, uh, let's just be more specific, uh, we have a roof deck, or amenity deck, not roof deck, amenity deck, on the second level that has an area for the residents to, uh, for the pool, a barbecue area, a place to relax, uh, and it's fully screened on the sides from the neighbors with that, that you know, wood screen system. So this is a nice area uh, back for them. And you can see, you know, it's important also to see on this image that the architecture is four-sided. Uh, we're not building a building that only faces the street and forgetting about the rest. We care about what happens to our neighbors who see us from the back and from the sides. So you can see that the architecture is consistent on all four sides of the building, which we think is very important. When it came to site planning of the building, one of the very another important aspect of the site layout is, although in this zone we are allowed to build right up to the property line, we do recognize that we have neighbors to the west that are not going to change. Those are existing houses. It's a part of this development zone that these houses are being somewhat historic and they're not going to change, so they're going to be there. And we were cognizant of that, and we wanted to make sure that they were able to maintain their view corridor from their front yard down the street to the east towards the beach. So the house, the, house, the building is purposely set back actually one foot further from the original building to maintain the sight line from these front yards, as you can see that's highlighted all the way down to the, to the beach area. So we were cognizant of you know, us being up against other residential uh, single family houses and we tried to accommodate that the best that we could. The next point that I have is overall site plan. So, as I mentioned, uh, you know, we're holding that back. The room on the corner, you can see where the existing building is, the existing single dwelling, and then how we're set back from there. Um, we have, you know, our sidewalk area that runs along the front that connects to the existing sidewalk. On the east side, uh, we have, a, on our property, we have a 15-foot uh, drive aisle that's shared with the adjacent property, which is another, I think, seven, half feet somewhere about there to make a 24 foot drive aisle that goes around to the building and then the parking is in the rear. So the parking is screened from uh, the street. It's tucked behind the building underneath the uh, amenity deck. On this first, also uh, as a part of the site plan, we have these little grass, these are the grass private areas that we have talked about. And the primary entrance, if someone were to come to visit and park on the street, they would have access from the sidewalk right to the middle into a common vestibule. And then the people, the residents who park have an entrance in that common space in the back. And I can get to more details of the plan after. Yeah. 
this is basically a landscape plan, kind of show you the green spaces and the and the uh, uh, area that's here. You have based, you know, primarily off the guidelines. They tell you how to, you know, a landscape is streetscape, and we're not changing or deviating from any of those requirements. We have the required pavers, street trees, sidewalk. We have a green space, and then we even have little green spaces for those residents outside. So there's a nice buffer uh, and streetscape for the community and the area. Um, from there, I can make a work out and go to the uh, floor plans. Yeah, there's a more technical thing, so you know, I'm not going to say it. So this is the first floor plan, similar to the site plan. Parking in the back. We have this kind of surface quarter that splits the first floor that has bike storage, elevator, package room, garbage, and there's a concealed space. Uh, for the utility meters and things like that, so they're not visible to the public. On the, also on the first floor, uh, we have four um, units. They're, they're part of the second floor units, so the second floor is a duplex. You enter at the second level and you're able to go down, so this is kind of like a bonus space. This is not a separate unit, and it's not, uh, you cannot enter it from inside the building. You have, you have to enter it from the main unit above, which you will see. The main purpose of that was to create a streetscape of residential rather than having, you know, where you just have screening for parking underneath and you park behind those actual units. Okay, so this is a, the basic second floor layout. Most of the layouts you'll see that are kind of similar on each floor with little tweaks and differences, so I'll go through quickly. So here is basically there's uh, eight units on the floor, each unit is approximately about 1,200 square foot at this level. Uh, the units on the front here, the four units, um, are the ones that have the access to the, the space below. It's an open floor plan, so when you enter the space, you can look right out. We have folding partitions that let light and air in. Uh, the back units are similar, except where they have a few steps down to the amenity deck. So the amenity deck is about 6,000 square foot with the sun deck, and pool, barbecue area, and ramps. Uh, the amenity deck also has um, access directly to the roadway, so if you're coming off the beach or something, you can just go right to the mini deck without trusting through the building. So um, that's the basic second floor, you know, elevator, you can decide to drive to a hall. Third floor, uh, the third floor is here, uh, basic of all the floors, so it doesn't have anything that goes up or anything goes down. Each unit is solely on this floor. Roughly again, about 1,200 square foot a unit open plan. The the corner units have two bedrooms since we have availability for windows. The interior units have one bedroom with a den, so pretty straightforward double loaded quarter.
as a car height, you probably won't even be as high as the wall or close to it. So it's somewhat subterranean, but it's not. And then quickly, just a basic section that shows, you know, that long way you can really get into the place. It's the mezzanine level, um, you know, just so you can get a sense of the, uh, the overall height and scale. And uh, that's no, I just, yeah, I just know you wanted us to run through that. Obviously, you can answer any questions, but this is the proposal that we have to go forward into uh, uh, whatever's next. It's a beautiful trip. It's a really beautiful building. Thank you. Thank you. Once you get all your approvals, what would the time frame on build out be? Uh, this is probably 10 to 12 months. 10 to 12 months. It's a stick built project over a podium, so pretty quick. Would you use the parking lot for a staging area, or would you need an additional staging area? No, we can use the, the project that's there. Mo almost all of that rear area is uh, going to be open for us to stage in. It's a very nice building. Thank you. We, we have nothing uh, further. We want to obviously thank you and wish you uh, happy and healthy 2019. And we look, uh, on behalf of Trip uh, Trip Brooks, I look forward to working with all of you and with iStar officials as we uh, continue this subsequent developer process. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Good you. luck, and so much. let's get it moving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move on to a uh, review of this evening's agenda. <laughs> Starting with consent agenda items, resolution 2018-433 is approval of special events. 434 is the refund of overpayment of taxes and 435 is a standard annual submission of a grant application to the state for the 2018 year-end holiday drive silver. It pays for police overtime to do um, DWI checkpoints. Is there any questions on the um, consent agenda? No. Moving on to the individual resolutions. 427 is authorizing change order two for the contract for the Springwood Avenue Sanitary Sewer Project. 436 is the payment of bills. 437 is change order number seven to complete 4th Avenue. Um, 438 is authorizing the transfer of appropriations in this year's budget. 439 is a notification email. Um, when this project, when the solid waste collection, which is, was awarded to Delissa three years ago, um, was bid, there was an option for a one, two year extension at no additional charge. Um, this is actually a great deal for the city. It is a below market rate, um, and this will lock us in for the 2019 and 2020 years at today's current rates. Um, <coughs> 440 is the authorization for BR welding to supply parts to fix the RBCs that treat the liquid waste at the sewer plant. 441 is um, purchasing of concrete. As we've been reviewing our purchasing, Anything over $6,000 requires multiple quotes. This is a technical aspect that we've gone over $6,000 for concrete, and it now needs council approval. 442 is an authorization of a police trailer to um, move equipment back and forth. This is funded through a grant. As is 443, um, the city was one of only six municipalities in the state, maybe seven, that received um, this security grant for listed as 443. 444 is an in-rim foreclosure settlement uh, that was recently discussed. The property owners wish to pay all subsequent taxes and fees and pay us back what is to make us whole. Um, is there any questions on the resolutions? I have a question on 437, the 4th Avenue improvements. What are we still working on on 4th Avenue? This is the final change order of materials. Are we still doing work on 4th? No, this is just cleaning just, up. This okay, is administrative perfect. paperwork. Stuff. All right, thank you. Moving on to second reading of ordinance is 2018-21. Uh, These are all for second reading, and if not voted upon tonight, they, for lack of a better term, die. Um, second reading is 
adding chapter two, section 88, development fees to the city of the code, to the code of the city of Asbury Park. 39 is amending various articles of section of the code of the city of Asbury Park. Um, those are involving planning. Regarding traffic 2018-54, uh, the transportation director is here. Um, Mr. Michael Manzella, if there's any questions on that. 2018-55, staff's ordering just to pull it and don't vote on it. Um, there's some technical questions that we don't think this is actually needed. 2018-56 um, is vacating an unnamed alley um, with block 1801 on sheet 18. This is an alley, it's a piece of grass um, that we are vacating. We have no use for it. The property owners are aware that we're giving it to them. Um, we have no use for this swath of land. And then final ordinance, I believe it's final ordinance, is 2018-57, which is the purchase and environmental aspects of a parcel for the new firehouse. Is there any questions on any of the ordinances? Thank you. Matters by City Council. Um, I've got nothing. I just want to wish everyone a very happy new year and thank everyone who came out and volunteered uh, for the various soup kitchen, kitchens and, and other initiatives that helped our city's families and children, the Asbury Park Toy Drive um, and, and so many others. Um, thank you. Uh, just want to announce again that the city and the quality of life committee are sponsoring a winter coat giveaway and also food giveaway on January 12th, 9 to 12 in the Transportation Center. And we are accepting donations up until the 12th. And they can bring the donations to the second floor of City Hall near, near the city manager's office. And I too want to thank all those wonderful people who helped to make the holidays better for those who are less fortunate. And to everybody in the city, have a fabulous 2019. Thank you. I have nothing. I have, <clears throat> again, wish everybody a happy new year. We've been trying to get the city owned right away and the city owned parking lot open for before Thanksgiving. We met with iStar on November 30th and they said they wanted a letter. We sent them the letter well over a week and a half ago, and the lot's still not opened. I mean, I, I don't understand the delay. I mean, they got the letter. Should we send it to them again? And if not, should we just cut the lock? I would recommend cut the lock because it's not our property. It is our property. The, the property is in the fencing. What? We didn't, it's, it's not our fencing, it's not our equipment that's there. Right. But the, property fenced off is the city owned lot that yes. we've been trying to get open. They said they're going to work together with us to get it open. They wanted a letter making sure they couldn't be sued. We furnished them that letter. It was not the constitution. It was like one page saying here, you know, you won't get sued. So I don't understand the whole thing. They came back and um, asked to see our insurance policy, which was provided to them yesterday. So they have every information that they've requested from us. Can we give them a deadline? If you want. Okay. I think we need well, then to. the lot should be open no later than Wednesday, the day after New Year's. Okay. And if they don't open it, we'll open it. I'll tell them by the close of business on Wednesday, either it's open or Thursday morning, we're doing it ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We should have done that in my fault. We should have done that in November. Thank you. Matters by the city manager? None at this time. Matters by the city attorney? Nothing at this time. This time we'll break until 7 o'clock for the regular meeting. Uh, Good evening. I'm going to open up the city council regular meeting. Roll call. Councilmember Chapman? Here. Councilmember Clayton? Here. Councilmember Kendall? Deputy okay. Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Please rise for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
As to comply with the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, <coughs> adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 4, 2018, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the City Clerk. This time, can I have a motion to open the meeting to the public, please? <coughs> Move it. Second. Anyone who wishes to come up and speak, please come up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record, and each member will have three minutes to speak. Thank you. Uh, Robert Wiener, 601 Madison. I have a couple, just a couple of quick questions. Earlier this year, we discussed an ordinance to raise the fines for drinking in Asbury Park to ma uh, match Belmar's. Belmar, automatic fines for drinking in public, urinating in public, that is $350. And I believe there was a promise made that we were going to review our ordinances to at least match Belmar. So I just wanted to bring that up. New Year is coming. And the second quick question, talking about parking. Could you tell me why the Bangs Avenue garage was closed for the last two weekends, Friday and Saturday night, when there were so many people in town? And um, I, did, I live across the street, so I just saw people doing U-turns all day and night because they expected it to be open. So the past two weekends, Friday night, Saturday night, Bangs Avenue garage was closed. No, this time we can't answer that, but do me a favor. The next time you see it close, call my house and let me know. Then okay. I'll, I'll call the city manager and he'll call Mr. Manzella and he'll call down the road and we'll get it open. <laughs> okay. So it's news on us. For the fines and fees, it's going to, I finished it last week or the week mm -hmm. before. It goes to the city attorney who sends it to the assignment judge and then the process starts. Great. Thank you. It's not council action. It's just administrative through the courts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Christian Eber, First Avenue. Um, that's a great idea, by the way. The amount of public urination and other things that I see go on in the park across the street, I mean, it, it's ridiculous. And a lot of times there's tickets not issued to people for doing it. Um, but I came here to talk about two things. Number one is the parking, uh, Walton side parking. Thanks, Mike, for getting it done. It's working. The streets are getting clean. It, it's, it's wonderful. Um, and it's been going about two weeks now. And the second thing is the park across the street. Back to that is that. In Library Square Park on First and Asbury, it's not well lit. I brought up to you guys before. Um, someone's been mugged in there before, and the amount of strange things I see going on day and night in there, it's pretty weird. I've seen heroin used. I've seen people drinking every day. Um, it's just getting weirder and weirder. And there's a lot of boarding houses over there that um, the people just empty out and hang out in there all day, and then they hang out at night, and then from around that I see it going on, I call the police, take them out of the park, but. It, it's just a growing problem, and it's just, it's just a breeding ground for people to hang out and drink and do heroin openly. And, um, it's getting worse, and I've been across the park now for over two years now, and I've just seen it progressively going downhill. It needs to be well lit. The perimeter around the park is not lit whatsoever, and I'd be happy to take a tour with any guys anytime to walk around the park and show you that it's not lit. The whole perimeter is dark. The inside has a few outdated yellow lights. It's an issue. And when the police go around the park, they can't even see in there because there's no lights. So there's nothing to see. Um, so it's getting a bit frustrating. And it's a beautiful park on the street, but it's just becoming unnerving of seeing what's going on there uh, day in and day out. I'm sure the police will tell you that they have made arrests in there for heroin, they've made arrests in there for drinking. It just gets worse and worse. So there needs to be more light in there. It has to. Um, because the police, police can't do their job and see in there. And people, someone's going to get hurt or even worse. So. Thank you. Thanks. Motion to close public session? No. No. I just hear you sniffing. I haven't heard that on the other side. Hi, Ernest Mignoli, uh, 400 Deal Lake Drive, Asbury Park, New Jersey. Uh, I just um, got my calendar in the mail. And. Uh, I'm looking over the accomplishments uh, inside cover. And um, one, one thing I'm really concerned about is the notation that uh, crime is down by the FBI reporting system by 11%. And I noticed that uh, when I looked at that statistic, it was something that the uh, police department pulled after the third quarter which means there's still the fourth quarter. 
And typically in Monmouth County, a lot of crime takes place around Christmas time and when there's a lot of extra drinking and crime and drug use, etc. So that's one issue. In other words, the, the data. And then the other thing is I wanted to point out that the measure of a municipality and law enforcement is not so much their own percentage of crime up or down, but it's the FBI law enforcement New Jersey reporting system, which means they take 565 municipalities, they rate you per capita for every thousand people so that they could compare Asbury to Newark or whatever. So per capita, they look at how much crime in each 1,000 people. And they usually use a sample probably of two or 3,000 to kind of norm it. And the result is they rate from the safest to the most dangerous. And I know whenever I come here and I talk about this subject, I always seem to feel people are overly interested. I think I'm probably the only person in Asbury so interested in crime. But uh, anyway, I'll continue. So they rate it. And it's a yearly rating. And the FBI reporting system puts it out. And we are in what's known as the triangle of crime. The second, 15th, and 25th almost always remain in that position of 565, meaning they're the worst. The second worst in the state is, guess what? My city, where I'm a homeowner, Asbury Park. So if you're rated second of 565, if you have movement within second, that's not significant. So when you say, well, crime's down 11% by our reporting system, but then you look at the reporting system and you're not moving outside your bracket. So it's not what we call significant. The other thing is, there was a bit of an anomaly in that Asbury Park in 2016 and 17, myself and several people reported bias hate crimes. And they stated that there were no bias hate crimes in 16 or 17. Thank you. Move to close. I have a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We move on to minutes. We have three sets of minutes this evening. We have second session minutes of December 12, 2018, workshop minutes of December 12, 2018, and regular session minutes of December or yeah, December 12, 2018. May I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to consent agenda. Resolution 2018-433, resolution approving special events application. 2018-434, resolution to refund overpaid taxes for 115 Atkins Avenue. 2018-435 to authorize the submission of a grant application to the State New Jersey State of New Jersey Department of Public Safety Division of Highway Traffic Safety under the 2018 Year End Holiday Drive Sober Grant. Does anybody wish any of those resolutions be pulled off the consent agenda? If not, can I have a motion to approve? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember or Deputy Mayor Quinn. Sorry. Yes. And Mayor yes. Moore. Yes. We're on to individual resolutions. Resolution 2018-427. This is an authorizing change order number two, the contract for Springwood Avenue Sanitary Sewer Project. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2018-436. Resolution approving payment of bills. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2018-437, resolution approving change order set number seven for Fourth Avenue improvements. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-438, resolution authorizing transfer of appropriations in the fiscal year 2018 budget. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Have a second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 
18-439 authorizing the extension of solid waste collection services through December 1st, 2020. 31st, 2020. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Count, uh, Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-440 authorizing BR Welding Inc. to supply parts of the re rebuilding of the RBCs of the wastewater treatment plant. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. 2018-441 resolution authorizing the purchase of concrete from Sioux Falk Red X Mix for various sidewalk aprons and aprons. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember, any questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2018-442, resolution authorizing the purchase of a police trailer. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2018-443, resolution authorizing the purchase of various physical barriers and trailers for the police department. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2018-444, resolution authorizing the settlement of contested in rent foreclosure matter involving a property located at 26th Avenue A and authorizing the city officials to take appropriate actions to effectuate the settlement. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Want to ordinances. Madam Clerk. Yes. Can I just make a statement that um, for the public that the calendars have been mailed? This is the best time to throw this in there. I um, mean, there has there has been a printing error in one or two of the batches that we have found. Um, it came from the printing company. Two of the pages are upside down. So if anyone who's watching this receives a calendar and error, please reach out to City Hall um, and we'll give you a correct one if you're interested. That's it. Sorry. Well, no. You may continue. Oh, well, thank you. We're on to ordinances. Second it's reading. We have Ordinance 2018-21, an ordinance of the City of Asbury Park, County of Mama State of New Jersey, adding Chapter 2, Section 88, Development Fees in the Code of the City of Asbury Park. Have a motion to open this ordinance to the uh, public, please? Move it. Second. Okay. Seeing no public comment, have a motion to close, please? Move it. Second. Second. Have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2018-21? Move to adopt. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're on to ordinances 2018-39, an ordinance amending and supplementing various articles and sections of the code of the city of Asbury Park. Can I have a motion to work, open this ordinance to the public, please? Move it. Second. Motion. Seeing no public, have a motion to close. Move it. Second. Second. Have a motion to adopt ordinance 2018-39. Move to adopt. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2018-54, Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park, amending and supplementing Chapter 7 of the Code of the City of Asbury Park regarding traffic and parking regulations. Can I have a motion to open this to the public, please? Move it. Second. So what does Mayor and Council, if I can, um, this is a we do an annual revision every year at the end of the year to update the parking regulations for the following year. Um, the biggest thing that this ordinance does it, is it re actually reintroduces guest permits for residents. Um, several years ago, there used to be guest permits. Um, there was found to be a lot of abuse because they were done by hang tag. Um, we now have a technology solution to allow them to be reintroduced. So we're going to allow guest permits for residents. Um, it also changes the monthly employee parking permit to a quarterly employee parking permit, um, expands some of the requirements for 
that residents can provide for proof of residency um, and proof of employment for employees. And there's other just minor cleanup issues. So um, if um, this impacts homeowners, like everything that you said does, uh, you're getting ready to vote on something where it doesn't even explain it. And then the second thing is, don't, don't we ever have any input before it goes to a vote? I mean, it's kind of like always a, a rush to a <laughs> vote and we find out after. Uh, so all of these recommendations we vet every year through the parking committee at multiple meetings. Um, and anyone, anyone from the public is uh, allowed to, you know, attend and provide comment. And, and now. And right now, yeah. Or the last meeting because it was advertised at the last meeting and it's been on the website for the past month. Yeah. You know what it is, Mayor? Like, you know, I live and I'm always around Asbury. I talk to a lot of people. And it seems like people have a lot of issues with a lot of things. But they're not willing to come here. And that's what concerns me. In other words, that's not if you concerns. want to talk about a sore subject in Asbury, talk about parking with homeowners or people who live in mid rises or high rises or condos. And just talk about that. Like the hair on the neck stands up right away. But the thing is, they don't show up here, Mayor. That's okay. what I don't get. Thank you. When's the next parking committee meeting? January 6th. The what? January 6th. Okay, because in the calendar, the thing is wrong. Okay. I went to one, they don't show up there either. No, but you can show up and. What? But you can show up and voice your opinion. I know, but I'm No, we listen. Ask we Chris. Listen. We listen. You listen <laughs> to me, really? Yeah. Can I have a motion to close Paula, please? It's January 9th. Second. But that's the same night as a council meeting, so that can't be. It is. Yeah, it that's, is. that's a Wednesday, the same night as a council meeting. Same with uh, quality of life. Too. Quality of life. All right, well, let's, let's just okay. move on this. <laughs> <laughs> can I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2018 54. Move it. Second. Second. Council Member Chapman. Yes. Council Member Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2018-55 has been withdrawn. 2018-56 vacating an unnamed alleyway measuring 15 feet wide located east of Dunleavy Street in Block 1801 as shown on sheet 18 of the official tax map of the City of Asbury Park. Have a motion to open this to the public please. Move it. Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman. Yes. Seeing no public comment, have a motion to close. Move it. Second. Have a motion to adopt ordinance 2018 56. Second. Have a motion first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured somebody would beat me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Move to adopt. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2018 57. Bond ordinance providing for the acquisition and the payment of the purchase of price of real property and construction of a firehouse by in, in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth, state of New Jersey, appropriating three million five hundred thousand, therefore an authorizing issuing of three million five hundred thousand dollars bonds or notes in the city to finance the cost of the park to finance costs thereof. I have a motion to open this to the public, please. Move it. Second. Ernest, we only deal like Drive Asbury. So, we're talking about appropriating 3.5 million for a new firehouse. Yeah. Correct. This is step one of many. Step one. What did I read in the paper and at the last meeting? A 20 million number came up. What was that? It's been changed because of the local finance board. That's nice. Is there any chance that this one could be changed? No. Well, maybe we can build like. Allenhurst or some of the other, just a metal kind of building. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy. We don't need one with a gym and all kinds of stuff. If you look around, there's very modest firehouses that are excellent. I'd rather see the money go into equipment myself. I mean, we have inferior equipment. I'd rather have a metal building that's not expensive and get some decent equipment. That, that would be my opinion, but again, who am I? So, but this number is negotiable too. That number is the beginning of the process to build a firehouse. Okay, does this include buying the land or where the city owns the land? No, that's 
to go towards buying the land. Michael, if I'm wrong on anything, correct me. You're 100% correct. So, that, so far, it looks like around 3.5 million to buy land and build a building. No, I, that's, it's, the it's, that's the first step. It's going to be a lot more than $3.5 million. And Allenhurst Fire Department, they're volunteers, so there's no one that actually stays there during the shift. And Allenhurst Fire Department is not a steel build, building. I would, love, I would hope our fire department is the same as Allenhurst Fire Department because it's a fantastic building with a fantastic club in it and everything else. So, Where, the uh, one we have? No, Allenhurst, the one on Hume Street. It's been there since I was a kid, since my father was a kid. But to call, that, to call that a metal shed yeah. is doing that a disservice. I like, I've been in there, and I like when you walk in, there's a huge bar in there. No, that's, that's JCP&L. The firehouse is across the street on Hume Street. Yeah. Okay. So this one's abandoned in there, right, Morris? I mean condemned in there. It, it's been condemned in the past. It's not condemned now. Oh, no. Motion to close. Move it. Second. I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2018-57. Move it. I have a second? Second. second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Seeing no further business, I have a motion to adjourn. Move, Move it. it. Move it. Everybody have a happy new year. All in favor. Happy new year. Thank you. Hey, Michael, come here for one minute.